Hey everybody, this is Attorney Kenneth Stevens from the law firm Stevens PLLC. And today what I want to talk to you all about is something I've already said before, but I don't feel like it's really been driven home because I'm still seeing you all do it a whole lot. And that is, you all are still uh, using AIA agreements without fully understanding uh, what's in the agreement. And what do I mean by that? If you're using an AIA agreement, you have to make sure that you understand what all is incorporated by reference into that agreement. So for example, the most commonly used agreement and the one that I see a lot of you downloading, filling out, or maybe you get it from uh, opposing counsel, uh, you don't have legal counsel, is the uh, 102-2007, right? And so you'll look at it, it's short, I think it's maybe like 10 pages at the most, depending on what you all add into it. It's not a very long agreement at all, but you look at it and um, you know you might go through and redline a couple things and you call it a day uh, or maybe you download it yourself and you fill it out and then you send it over to a client and you know they look at it executed it, and it's all said and done the problem is the 102 incorporates the 201 by reference and the 201 is the general conditions and it's a really really dense a lot thicker agreement that has all kind of things in it it has you know additional obligations it has um, you know the fact that you have to make repairs even after you substantially uh, completed the project so up to a year you you have to make repairs uh, there's there's also additional information in there regarding like dispute resolution or or like uh, specific stuff maybe regarding claims specific deadlines where you can have claims waived and different things of that nature and that that document, that thick document that you have no idea even exists because you haven't read the 102, that document is incorporated by reference in the 102. So if you sign the 102 and you make the 102 a part of your, your contract documents and you don't strike the 201 language, uh, you don't specifically exclude that, well, you're going to be bound by all those obligations. So what I really encourage you to do is to look at the 201, make sure that you understand it. If you're going to use a 102, look at that, make sure you understand it, and, and bring it to an attorney so that you can get some, some, some guidance on what you know, your obligations are. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. As always, you all share it, and happy building.